The starting point in science is observation. What you are seeing here is what happened to the North Tower of the World Trade Center, the second of three buildings to collapse on 9 11 2001. I use the word collapse, but words can be deceptive. What do you really see happening here? There's a tremendous amount of falling debris. But under the canopy of debris, do you see the rapid sequence of explosive ejections of material? Some of the jets have been clocked at over 100 miles per hour. I will call them explosions because it's hard to find other words that describe what we are seeing here. The explosions are not isolated and few. They are continuous and widespread. They move progressively down the faces of the building, keeping pace with the falling debris. Perhaps you can imagine a natural cause, but I can't. Notice that the explosions are occurring on multiple floors at once, over a wide zone, not in a floor-by-floor -floor sequence that might be explained by pancaking collapse. Notice there are explosions far below the point of collapse. Some are isolated and focused. These are often referred to as squibs and are commonly seen in controlled demolitions. However, this is not a standard controlled demolition. The building is being progressively destroyed from the top down by waves of explosions, creating a huge debris field. The destruction is in waves, not just in one wave. Most obvious is a rapid sequence of explosions near the visible corner of the building. But simultaneously, we can see another wave of explosions much further down the face of the building under the canopy of falling debris. Notice that both waves of explosions progress down the face of the building, nearly keeping pace with the falling debris just a few feet away. Slabs of concrete did not fall to the ground and smash to dust. There is almost no concrete in the rubble pile. Notice that the concrete is being forcefully ejected outward from the sides of the building, already pulverized to dust. Notice that embedded in the dust clouds are huge girders and entire sections of steel framing that are being hurled out of the building. The horizontal speed of some of the girders has been clocked at over 70 miles per hour. Some of these girders impale themselves in the sides of neighboring buildings. Some landed as much as two football fields away from the base of the tower. What could hurl heavy girders with such force and give them such speed? Some people have suggested that the weight of the tower crushing down on the girders caused them to flex, and they sprung sideways by a spring action. But we are not seeing isolated jumping girders. We are seeing a major fraction of the mass of the building, steel, concrete, office furniture, and remains of 